Mike, Newport, Kentucky, Democrat. You're on with Senator Tammy Baldwin. Thank you for taking my call. I have just a couple quick statements and then a question. Uh, an awful lot of money has been spent fighting the post-9-11 wars, and yet taxpayers still have many unanswered questions about this event. Uh, despite the fact that an international team of scientists published in the peer-reviewed journal, uh, the Bentham Open Chemical Physics Journal, proving the existence of nanothermite found in the dust. Okay, tell you what, we, we, got, we got where you're going on that first question. What's your next question, Mike? standards and technology, the agency tasked with investigating why these three buildings failed. Hey, building Mike, do you, do you have a follow-up question? We understand where you're going on that first issue. Samples. Okay, what? you know what? We're, we'll see what the senator has to say about that. 9-11 conspiracy theories and different ways of looking at 9-11. What are your thoughts? You know, um, the uh, report that I go by is the 9-11 Commission. And frankly, uh, many of its uh, uh, recommendations and assessments have become very relevant this week as we've dealt with a, um, a, a shocking uh, tragedy uh, in, in Boston. And, uh, you know, it's actually given me this week an opportunity to reflect on how far we've come, for example, with Homeland Security in the 10 years since that uh, agency was created. Uh, as you noted, I'm on the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. And, um, you know, they are hard at work, the Joint Terrorism Task Force uh, uh, through the FBI and, and Homeland Security and local officials in Boston in trying to um, bring answers and, and bring uh, ultimately the perpetrators to uh, uh, bear the full weight of justice in the United States. Um, but, uh, you know, back to the, the caller's question, um, what's important to me is that uh, we have made dramatic improvements in uh, securing the uh, safety of our, our homeland, the security of our homeland, but we can always do better. Our first call, uh, New York. This is on our Republican line. Kelly, good morning. Good morning. Something that continues to impact our national security policy, of course, is 9-11. And uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology claims that fire caused the complete destruction of the World Trade Center Building 7 on 9-11, but has admitted that the building was in free fall acceleration for at least 100 feet, which means it was meeting no resistance for roughly about eight stories. So using your common sense, how is that possible without the use of free planted explosives? So what does that mean for the common day situation of the Boston bombings, ma'am? Because they're all connected. Okay, we'll leave it there. Well, there, there is a, a theory that um, the bombs were planted, that 9-11 was um, a government conspiracy. I don't believe that. Uh, Mike from Wyoming, Michigan. This Andy is next. Vernon, New York. Good morning. Hi, thank you. Sure. Um, National Institute of Standards and Technology acknowledged that the World Trade Center Building 7 fell at free fall acceleration for over 100 feet on 9-11, which means it was meeting no resistance for eight stories. So sparing me a diatribe about conspiracy theories, can you please give me a straight answer on how you think that's scientifically possible without the use of explosives? Look, I think we should pass on this question. If you want to tell me that there's something going on beyond two planes going into the buildings, I never saw anything that suggested it. That was the most investigated event probably in FBI investigative history. So I've heard this comment that, you know, you'd need explosives inside the buildings to bring them down. I just, you know, I don't want to spend time on this question. I don't think it's valid. Thank you. And I agree. We've had that question posed many yeah. times before. Hopefully uh, that will be the end of it. Uh, Robert is next. We take them all here. Bring them on. <laughs> no, we're happy to take the questions. That's, that's been coming up for the last 10 or 12 yeah, years. Yeah, and fine. Well, you've been hearing the conspiracy theories uh, on this for many years as well. And sometimes you have to scratch your head. Well, I'll go down to the coffee shop on Cooper Street here in, in uh, Memphis afterward. And hopefully nobody will notice I was on the show so I can have a cup of coffee and forget about the conspiracies. <laughs> And what he was saying was, when America acknowledges its mistakes, when it lives up to its values, then and only then can we become an inspiration for the rest of the world. Congressman Brian Higgins of New York. Let's go to John, a Democrat in Loveland, Colorado. Hi, John. Hi. I'm a retired police officer. After 9-11, in its investigation of the World Trade Center's 
destruction, the National Institute of Standard and Technology refused to test its World Trade Center dust samples for the possible use of pre-planted explosives in helping to bring the buildings down using the circular reason that there's no point in looking for something that they don't believe is there. Okay. Well, I was at 9-11 three days after the attack uh, at Ground Zero, and the, the, the devastation, destruction that was exacted on uh, America and uh, the World Trade Tower. You know, keep in mind, the terrorists identified those targets because they're symbolic of American economic prosperity. Um, two planes, significant planes, hitting those two ho towers have had a devastating impact. I don't know what the, the, the sub-explosives were. That's beyond my competence. But it's incredible uh, that, that that attack and, and the death and destruction that exacted on the American people. Uh, beyond that, I'm not qualified really to, to talk about explosives and those kinds of things. BJ tweets in. And Karen Bass is our guest, Democrat of California. The numbers are up on the screen. If you'd like to participate in our conversation, a lot of issues on the table. A couple more we want to discuss with her as well as we go. But we want to get you involved. We're going to begin with a call from David in Joppa, Maryland, on our Democrats line. Hi, David. Thanks so much. The threats to the Associated Press are only the latest example of our loss of civil liberties. Congress's refusal to discuss how two planes can bring down three towers on 9-11 is an example of self-censorship. What could, harm could any person in Congress find in supporting a new investigation into what really brought down World Trade Center's Building 7? Any response for that caller, Representative Bass? Well, I don't know that we would need another investigation into 9-11. Now, now, granted, this was before my time in Congress, but I know that there was an entire commission that looked into that. So I'm not really sure uh, what the outcome would be if we had another investigation for 9-11. Next is Shannon from Rome, New York, Independent Line. Uh, yes, uh, a 9-11 World Trade Center Building 7 wasn't hit by an airplane, but it did fall straight down symmetrically like a typical controlled demolition. Fires never caused a steel frame high rise to do that before or after 9-11. So caller, man, caller, caller, this is the, uh, about the IRS. If, uh, if that's the topic you want to talk on, go ahead. It's all related. We'll hear from Joe next. Bill Kristol writes in The Real Scandal, his editorial, Obama's liberal policies are more dangerous than his managerial scandals. Let's go to the phones and hear from Laura in Orange Park, Florida, Democrats line. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, now that journalists find themselves the target of an increasingly Orwellian government, are you afraid that more of them might retaliate by speaking out about Building 7 and the explosive nanothermite residue found in the World Trade Center dust? Uh, World yeah. Trade Center. No, I think the World Trade Center was attacked by jihadists and unf who unfortunately succeeded in killing 3,000 Americans. You're a journalist. Uh, let's go to John in Livingston, New Jersey, who's a Republican. Hi, John. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Listen, since morning. you're in the media, I wanted your insight on something. Given that more and more people have stopped trusting the government and corporate media now, what can the establishment do to keep people from Googling Building 7 and realizing the buildings in New York were brought down in a pre-planned controlled demolition on 9 John, we've already addressed this issue, so we'll move on. We already got uh, Bill Crystal's thoughts on that. Let's go to Gary. About that as well, so let's get to them. Christine right. in uh, New Jersey, Democratic caller. Christine, what's the name of your mm -hmm. town? Oh, uh, Lake Apacon, New okay. Jersey. Okay, all right, go ahead. Good morning. Um, well, I wanted to ask, in light of the current distrust of the government and with all the scandals going on, don't you think it would be a good idea to get to the bottom of people's concerns about what really happened on I-11 with Building 7, with over 1,900 architects and engineers disputing the official story? Are you talking about 9-11-2001? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, there's like uh, 1,900 architects and engineers disputing the official story because it's you know, needs to be investigated further. And Christine, where, where do you read about this? Where are you getting this information? There, it's all over the place, and lots of people are talking. I don't hear it in the mainstream media, but I hear it um, online. There's lots of people talking about it. Okay, all right. John Delaney. So, yeah, so Christine, obviously 9-11 uh, was, a, was a tragic, uh, terrible day for our country. It's a day that we all remember with uh, sorrow for all of those people who lost their lives, and it was a real turning point in many ways uh, for our country, both domestically and internationally. And it'll, it'll remain an emotional day, I believe, for all Americans 
for our generation, it will be like Pearl Harbor was for the generation before. So I think there'll always be a lot of discussion and dialogue about what happened and how it was handled. Um, and, ha you know, even the memorial that's been built on the site, uh, which I've seen. I was actually there uh, only last week. I've been there several times, but I was in New York uh, a few weeks ago and went to the memorial. Even that's still a highly charged emotional uh, discussion about whether the memorial should have been built there or not. Was it the appropriate memorial, et cetera? So I, I think we're going to be living uh, for some time with a lot of emotions around 9-11, uh, the terrible tragedy where we lost so many Americans and uh, discussions about it. And I think it'll just be part of the, uh, the dialogue around that, um, that very significant day. On our line for Rip. We have about 25 minutes before the House comes in. Our guest is Bob Goodlatte, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, a Republican of Virginia. And Greg is a Republican in Kansas City, Missouri. Greg, you're on the air. Morning. Hi. Um, good morning. You've called for an investigation into the um, IRS scandal. And as bad as that scandal is, nobody has died from it. But people did die on 9-11, and countless members of Congress have been delivered a peer-reviewed paper proving the existence of explosive nanothermite residue in the World Trade Center dust. Craig, Why is Craig, it we got the point. We got the point. But when it comes to the IRS issue, have you called for an investigation? We certainly that? have. In fact, uh, <laughs> just yesterday, the uh, uh, a substantial number of members.